This is the single most effective build in Destiny 2 PvP that everyone is sleeping on. We're talking about threatening your foes from infinite range, impossibly low TTKs, unbelievable forgiveness, plus the most toxic exotic weapon in the Crucible, which Bungie has once again accidentally buffed. So today, I'm going to introduce you to the single best bow build in D2 history and go through the best aspects, fragments, abilities, and weapons to turn you into Rowdy Robin Hood. Let's get started. Believe it or not, but basically every single legendary bow in the game got buffed with Season of the Witch. I won't bore you with the technical details, but basically all bows, precisions, lightweights, legendaries, and exotics are going to be feeling a lot more consistent, especially at range. So there has been no better time than ever before to pick up one of the strongest and most underrated weapons in Destiny 2. And it's against this backdrop, of course, that I note, wow, what a great time to accidentally buff the strongest and most toxic bow in the game, Limonite. Le Monarch has been a scourge of the Crucible for some time now, a specialist long-range weapon constantly creeping into the top 10 trials meta. Lomanark was known for its absurd aim assist and hitbox where aiming at the belt would often grant a critical shot in addition to the massive chunk damage and to make things worse, the burn damage on top of that, which would frequently make you one shot while keeping you out of the fight for the next 7 seconds. So Bungie decided to lower the duration of the burn damage and turn it into a lightweight bow, you know, so it wouldn't be so oppressive. Except someone wasn't exactly paying attention to the numbers and Le Monarch is now the only lightweight bow that can also double body shot kill. Yep, Le Monarch is just as oppressive as ever and in some ways actually got buffed. Grab your Le Monarch, enjoy the lightweight bonus and burn damage and double body shot everyone to death, just like if you were using a precision bow. Now bows are an absolutely amazing weapon class but there exists an exotic armor piece that quite literally supercharges bows in much the same way as Peacekeepers buffs SMGs and that exotic is Oathkeeper. Oathkeepers allow you to hold a bow charge indefinitely and in the case of Le Monarch registers every drawn shot as a perfect draw meaning that you will always apply burn damage on your opponents. No need to time your bow draw just hold it until you see your opponent release for massive chunk damage then rinse and repeat. Oath Keepers also add 40 AE points meaning that you can use your bow freely in the air without any worry that your shots won't land. In fact bows have such generous aim assist and hitboxes that you'll see many great bow players don't even even bother aiming down sights except for longer shots. Oath Keepers also has a hidden bonus that isn't talked about where it grants a plus 10 draw time stat to all bows. In other words, all bows get a reduced draw time similar to a draw time masterwork just for having Oath Keepers equipped. By using Oath Keepers, you won't just be sitting in the back laning and putting in huge chunk damage with a bow, unless you want to that is. You'll also be able to play up close and personal like the clips you've been seeing making you a nightmare at all ranges. Just quickly did you guys know that only 12.3% of my viewers are actually subscribed? As a small content creator, it would genuinely mean the world to me if you could drop a like, a comment, and a sub if you found this video helpful so far. Thank you. In terms of aspects, hunters have four aspects available from which they can equip two. And for today's build, I'm going to recommend the rather unique combination of Threaded Spectre and Ensnaring Slam. Threaded Spectre means that activating your class ability leaves behind a strand decoy that explodes, dealing huge damage and releases threadlings when enemies get close. In other words, when you dodge, you leave behind a proximity landmine in the shape of a hunter. Your decoy will show up on radar like a real enemy, it also shows a health bar and your name tag when an enemy hovers their crosshair over it and it has roughly the same amount of HP as a typical guardian. Also, if you're playing against a controller player, the decoy will trigger their aim assist and reticle friction making it harder for them to aim at you. The decoy explosion and the two threadlings will not insta-kill a full health guardian but will leave them with very close to 1 HP. So so even the slightest damage done before the decoy explosion, say with a bow, or a little bit of chip damage done after is more than enough to finish a guardian. As for ensnaring slam, when you slam to the ground, all enemies within the radius of your slam are suspended in a BDSM-like strand web, jerking them into third person, disabling their ability to ADS, and rendering them virtually immobile. The ensnaring slam is quite literally a free kill or multi-kill when executed properly. Also because the slam has some directional control in terms of air 
air dodging, it also functions as an aerial dodge if you're caught out in the open mid-jump. That's why ensnaring slam is one of the strongest parts of the strand hunter kit. Not only does it grant hunters yet another fantastic movement tool, it also gives hunters the ability to disable targets with both extreme ease and frequency. Now you might be thinking, why not Widow's Silk for more grapple grenades? And the answer is quite simple. When you play against a bow, the common wisdom is that you should close the distance and push them. Because we know that's what people are going to try to do, we load our kits with close range counters like suspend and decoys. Simple as that. In terms of fragments, Strand Hunter has four available fragment slots, and here's what I recommend using. Thread of Ascent means activating your grenade ability reloads your equipped weapon and grants bonus AE and handling for a short duration, while also granting plus 10 mobility. Thread of Mind means defeating suspended targets grants class ability energy. See, after you use your slam ability, it actually doubles the cooldown of your next dodge, but when you use this fragment, you automatically get class ability energy for killing a suspended target, so it's an easy way to minimize the additional cooldown. Thread of Continuity means that Suspend, Unravel and Sever effects applied to targets have increased duration. In other words, your opponents will stay suspended for longer. Thread of Generation means that dealing damage grants grenade energy and is a good way to ensure you're always topping off your grenade energy while just playing the game. By the way, did you guys know that we just recently launched channel memberships? If you click on the join button over here, you can get access to the very exclusive benefits like our VIP Discord channel, coaching sessions, as well as being able to play trials or comp with me personally. Go check it out. In terms of abilities, make sure you use Marksman's Dodge as your class ability. That's because Marksman's Dodge has a much shorter cooldown than Gambler's Dodge, and we really want to maximize the amount of decoys and suspends that we're able to deploy. In terms of melees, the only melee ability available to Strand Hunters is called Threaded Spike. It does 80 damage to the body, tracks targets fairly aggressively, chains and damages grouped up enemies, and refunds a portion of melee energy if you catch it. The animation for this melee is so fast as to be practically instant, and when using a bow, if you head shot and immediately send out threaded spike, you are looking at a 0.5 TTK, which is literally uncounterable. Lastly, in terms of grenade choice, always, always go with grapple grenade. In terms of weapons, obviously you'll want to use a bow. So let's talk about the best bows for this build. Firstly, you have the Monarch for all the reasons we've already covered. A lightweight that can double body, applies burn damage, and grants a mobility and speed bonus. What's not to love? Other than the hate mail, of course, that you'll be getting from your vanquished opponents. Next up, we have the precision frame bows, and I highly recommend you craft either an under your skin or failing that the raconteur the under your skin has slightly better stats than the raconteur but more importantly both are craftable and able to equip the following perks archer's tempo and successful warm-up these perks reduce the draw time on bows and they stack so once you get a headshot or a headshot kill your precision frame bow now draws and shoots much faster leading to a greatly improved time to kill lastly lightweight bows have been especially buffed improving their hit registration and overall feel much like any lightweight frame they offer a plus 20 mobility bonus and a sprint speed bonus. The best lightweight bows are Tyranny of Heaven or Tripwire Canary, both of which have Archer's Tempo available, plus Swashbuckler on Tyranny of Heaven. They are not as forgiving as Precisions in the sense that they require one headshot and one body shot to kill, as opposed to two body shots with Precision bows, but they are much faster overall with a lower TTK. Lightweights are strong in the right hands, but I consider them a bow for an advanced bow user, so start with Lomon Arc or a Precision Frame and then eventually graduate to lightweights once you feel more comfortable. As for special weapons, I prefer running a high handling pellet shotgun like Fractithist with Quick Draw or Wastelander from Dares of Eternity, but you can also opt for a slug shotgun like Heritage, which allows you to body shot with the bow, then body shot with the slug shotgun for the kill. Lastly, in terms of mods, I recommend targeting mods, dexterity and loader mods for your bow, unflinching mods, holster mods for your special weapon, and utility kickstart times two on your class item. On your bow, you're going to want to run freehand grip, which allows you to hip fire with complete freedom. Aim for 100 mobility and 100 recovery, and then focus on as high strength or discipline as you prefer. To make things easier for you, you can also just check out the dim link below for the Oath Keeper's bow build, which I'm currently using with Strand. By the way, if you are enjoying my content, I do have a Patreon now, which comes with amazing benefits for members. If you're finding it hard to get your footing in the Crucible, then how about weekly one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with me, or playing trials and comp with me personally every week, not to mention exclusive access to a VIP Discord where you'll have direct access to me and other Patreons. Plus, you'll get a personal shout out in all of my future videos, 
kind of like this. As I've said many times before, as a small content creator, I am living lean. We're talking, I eat ramen every day lean. So 100% of my Patreon fund goes towards helping me put food in my stomach so I can keep making more videos for you. So if you're interested in taking your crucible experience to the next level while also stopping me from becoming a broken husk of a man, then check out my Patreon in the description below. And as usual, I'll see you all in the crucible.